Evening, evening, welcome to late night tinkering. I just wanted to show you there the battery on the Mavic is down to 18%. We're going to do a little bit of a tinkering with this battery. So we'll turn that off, wait till it goes off, and then eject it. We can get rid of the Mavic and the controller. The other, another video I did previously, I made this battery pack. Now, this is just a generic battery pack, it's like a 16 volt down to 212 volt as it gets used. And it's basically 12 18650 batteries. This was made for my uh, wireless VR that's not arrived yet. It's kind of lost in the ether on the way away from China. So I thought I'd try it for a mobile Mavic charging battery. So this is a really quick video and simple because I've done most of this before and it's, it's quite easy. Now, so we've got the battery. We've got the, the charging pack we're going to use. And I'll link the video at the end of this video to that. I've got a fast one I did. In, so it's a minute long. You can see it in an interval. Or you can see a 20 odd minute long where I go through it all in detail. Okay, so we've basically got the battery pack. We've got the, the Mavic battery. Now the Mavic battery, remember, has its own BMS. It controls the current coming in. So it won't charge if there's too little. It won't charge if there's too much. And it charges the voltage in the same. It won't charge if there's too little or too much. So you don't really need a BMS for the Mavic, you just need to supply it with the right charge otherwise it'll just shut off. So yeah, 16.4 volts on this. Now the, the Mavic will charge at around 13.1 volts. Now I charge these at 8 amps and I've done since I, I got mine first one of the first pre-orders and I've been charging 3 batteries at 8 amps and I've never had a problem doing that. I mean the battery might run, run down quicker but I'd rather just buy new batteries later if they get... If they, if they degrade badly and I'd rather charge them faster now. And I'll just show you it charging one. And so to, to actually set the voltage around 13 volts and keep it there as this goes from 16 to 12, we'll use one of these little uh, power converters or regulators. These are only about 10, 12 dollars. This is a good one because it's got both uh, a voltage adjustment. Uh, these are potentiometers and this has got voltage and the current one. So we can limit the current if we want. We've got a device that we want to do that. There and we can do that so we can limit that 8 amps on here we can limit this at 13 volts or regulate it at 13 volts so we want to basically plug all this in uh, well I'll leave the battery out of the loop at the moment and we'll put on the test meter and we'll make sure we're getting the right voltages uh, before we plug it all into the battery so yeah we want to make sure what's coming out of here is what the, bat what the, the Mavic battery needs so we'll plug this in and we'll plug this into the negative like so. So at the moment we've got 16.4 as we read before going into it and we've got 12.4 coming out and I've got the leads on backwards, don't worry about that. So we'll just go through here and we'll just tweak the, the voltage here. And we want to get this up to like 13.1 because that's the ideal. That'll kind of do. That'll do, it's fluctuating a little bit. Now what you really want to try is when we put it under load, we want to test that voltage again just to make sure it's not dropping. This regulator should keep it roughly exactly the voltage that you set the output as. So when you're using it with batteries like this, because batteries will drop as you as you draw the power from them and they get less capacity in there, then you the voltage would drop and this should this regulator should keep it the same. Okay, so now I'm gonna I'm gonna unplug this and I'm gonna do the ampage test. So I'm going to do this by plugging the battery in and see what it draws and then we'll make sure we're not limited below the 8 amps because I really want to pump this in and get the battery charged as fast as possible. So I'm going to put my meter on amps. Now with this I actually chopped this off when I first got my Mavic because I started charging the batteries my own, through my own power, power supply. Uh, so I just put an XT60 on this. This is just the default thing. I bet you can buy these now. It would be quite nice to have a few of those. So we'll plug the battery in. As you can see the battery was on, uh, it was almost down to 18%. So let me play it a little bit before it gets to 20. And it'll take a while. So we can see that's 7.7 7 amps already. So we can go on to the I, which is the ampage, and tweak this a little. I'm going the wrong way. So we'll go the other way. Oh, oh, a bit too far. That's perfect. So, oh yeah, it's fluctuating a little bit. So we can unplug that. We don't want to charge the battery too much because I want to do like a timed thing on it. There we go. So I'll unplug the battery. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to leave this charging. And this, uh, I've got my meter hooked up to my computer, so it will it will create like a little. If I put it on logging, it should start logging, and I'll be able to look at that in a graph in a bit so we can see how it tapered off because how batteries work is it when they're low you'll go full out on the ampage 
and then as you get up to like 80 90 percent they'll taper the amperage down so unplug it when it starts dropping the amperage and you get a good 90 percent charge in your battery and i think your batteries last longer that way i've heard that through the grapevine so let's plug this in and we'll see how long it takes so there we go so she's charging it's up at 7.945 amps and this thing is registering so this will give us the time and it'll show us the as the amps reduce <laughs> Okay, so that's fully charged now so we can have a look at that graph in a minute what I wanted to really say is this is all like a bench thing but you could easily stick this guy into like a plastic box like something like this you can get these for 50 cents off eBay so you could wire that with a plug but if you're going to use this permanently for this job you could put this in a box with this now this guy I put on is something that's essential if you build these DIY battery packs because this will give you an alarm if you're getting too low so you'll catch you kill these cells if you just keep running them and running and running them and then it'll give you the total voltage of the battery so that's ideal and then obviously with this battery I can you can just put it into like a hobby charger and you can balance charger and stuff like that but that's all in the other video that I'll point you to so now another thing I'm going to do just to compare this graph that we're going to have a quick look at is I've got another battery here and that's I also run that down to 18 percent and I've got the original charger here so I'm thinking, so I'm going to wire that up and I'll run the same graph on it. I'll actually save that one off. So I'll run the same graph on it and then we've got something to compare. So this is running, I think it's six amps, isn't it? But from the wall, so be able to compare the battery ampage charging compared to the wall ampage charging. Okay, so we've got the default wall charger charging nothing for some reason. Okay, so we've got the default wall charger charging the battery. from. This was 18% as well, exactly. So... We'll just leave that and we'll compare it. So I guess the default ultra only works at 4.2 volts. What surprised me in the previous uh, battery charging that they were doing was it was completely gradual all the way down. And something to look at in the graph. So I won't record all this, but we'll meet having a look at the graphs for these. Okay, so this is the graph for the ampage. So this is on the the output of the of the voltage regulator. So this is what it was feeding to the battery. Obviously there's some inefficiency inside the battery if it converts it into the cell, but this is what we've got. Now it's really interesting, you can see here, so the red is the, the wall charger, so it started off at the four, four amps. And it's interesting when it gets to uh, a certain percentage, after 26 minutes, it starts just ramping down very smoothly, as you can see, down into, uh, a lot of it is really low ampage, it's below uh, half a amp even. Then the eight ampage, you know, it ramped up a little fish, it cut down and it ramped up to what I must have had the limit set to was 8.175. Now the, the regulator will let it have anything to what it's limited to, so it would have let it, the battery have up to 8 amps. And it's actually the battery management system that controls this, how it, how it charges the battery. So it's kind of interesting how with the different currents that uh, the, the curves are so different. Now something you can see here also is the, the 8 ampage just... It must be where it gets to a certain percentage of the battery and this point is the same as this point maybe and that's when it says start curtailing the amperage down at a certain ratio it doesn't just drop it to a certain point and then you see that there and you get these strange bumps here I'm wondering if I do it again if I get exactly the same curve or it changes every time and the difference is 48 minutes for the this is the total charge back to 100% from 18% 48 minutes for the 8 amp with the back off the batteries and one hour seven minutes from the wall charge with the four amp. I did some uh, from the readouts. We had the, we could figure out the exact milliamp hour, and from that we could say from eight from eighteen percent already complete of the thirty eight hundred milliamp hour. We could we could look at exactly the accumulation as it filled the battery, and it's really really interesting. You can see most of the time is actually spent on the top 10% of the of the charge. So we're at like 27 minutes there out of 48. So we're still got another 20 minutes and we're already at 90%. And the same on the on the wall charge, uh, we're at 43 minutes. So you've still got uh, 17, 24 minutes to go for the final 10% of the battery. So that's kind of crazy. And then on this chart, I merged them. I look a bit complicated. So basically on the left, we've got the, the currents provided over time and so that's the lines and on the right we've got the percentage battery fall and so that's the filled graph area uh, what's really interesting here is I say uh, is the 90 percent about 2.2 amps it's still giving 2.2 amps at the 90 percent but yeah it's still got 
20 minutes to go. So from 27 to 48. And so, I mean, it's, a, it's, it's quite a bit longer when we're at 28 minutes for 90% on the 8 ampage and on the wall socket, we're at 41. So it's 42. It's quite a big difference. So my reading from this is uh, how 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 much flight do we get for that last ten percent? And would it be nice to have something that just cuts off and only charges to ninety percent? Because if you went from the wall charger, which is one hundred seven minutes, to an eight amp charger that you only charge the battery to ninety percent, you would be doing it in twenty seven minutes rather than a sixty seven. So that's a, it's, it's a lot faster charge rate. Uh, for me, I don't seem to fly that long. I go out, I may, maybe fly for 15 minutes, and then I've kind of caught, caught what I want, especially if I'm traveling and I'm thinking of a portable situation. I generally take off, I'll fly for 10, 15 minutes, caught what I want, then I'm back in the car and I can stick it on charge again. So the 90 minutes for me would be fine, and it'd be extremely quick. So if you're going from one location to another and they're quite close, you could really get your... You know, you could charge three batteries in an hour and a half there. Uh, interesting. Anyway, there's the details. Uh, I'll upload these pictures uh, somewhere, and I'll link them to in the description. Uh, I may uh, do a little bit more on this, create like a contained device with like a readout on there. And any questions, leave them in the comments or post them in the Reddit. That's where I link there. It's, uh, it's really interesting information. I say the main thing for me is that 90% that we're actually... You know, 40% of the charge time is the last 10% of the battery. And that's just the way uh, lithium batteries work. It's the way they keep the life. And uh, if they were if they were to ram the ampage in all the way to the end, the battery life wouldn't last too long. And I, I do have from a good source that this, uh, the batteries last a lot longer if you, if you leave them at 90% too. So it could be definitely something to consider. And uh, anyway, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye. Like a circle in a spiral, like a wheel within a wheel, never ending or beginning on an ever-spinning reel. Like a snowball down a mountain or a carnival balloon, like a carousel that's turning, running rings around the moon, like a clock whose hands are sweeping past the minutes of its face. And the world is like an apple whirling silently in space, like the circles that you find windmills of your mind like a tunnel you can follow to a tunnel of its own down a hollow to a cavern where the sun has never shone like a door that keeps revolving in a half forgotten dream or the ripples from a pebble someone tosses in a stream like a clock whose hands are sweeping past the minutes of its face and the world is like an apple whirling silently in space like the circles that you find in the windmills of your mind.